In this lecture, we are going to talk about another built-in structural directive of Angular, which is ng switch directive. So ng switch is also a structural directive. And we know that a structural directive manipulates the DOM by adding or removing DOM elements from the web page. So let's see how the ng switch directive works in Angular. And to understand ng switch directive, here I have created another Angular project called Angular switch directive. If I go to the source folder and if I open the app folder, here we have a single app component. We don't have any other component here. And if I go to the HTML of this app component, there you will notice that we have a container div. In that div, we have another div where we are specifying some buttons like info, service, privacy, and user agreement. And then we have another div. And inside this div, we have few different divs. So for example, we have this div where we are displaying terms of services and privacy policy. We have another div where we are displaying terms of services. We have this div where we are displaying privacy policy. And we have this div where we are showing some user agreement. So if I go to the web page, it looks something like this. So here we have the buttons, info, service, privacy, and user agreement. And then we have the content. Now, currently we are displaying all the contents at once. But what I want is based on the button, the user clicks from here, based on that, I want to display some content. So for that, what we are going to do is let's go back to VS Code and in there, let me go ahead and let me open app component class. And in there, I am going to create a property. I'll simply call it maybe tab. It is going to be of type string. And initially, I'll assign it with empty string. Okay. Now, based on the value of this tab, we want to display some content. Okay. So, based on the value stored in this tab variable, in this tab property, we want to display the content. For example, what we want is let's go to App component.html and in here let's go ahead and let's use ng switch directive on this first div element and remember that ng switch is a structural directive okay so here let me use ng switch and in order to use this ng switch we need to wrap it within square brackets now why are we wrapping ng switch within square brackets that's because it is not the ng switch directive which is going to manipulate the DOM Instead, we have other directive which we use with this ng switch which manipulates the DOM. So to this ng switch, we need to assign an expression. And here I'm simply going to assign the tab variable. And actually, I'm going to use this ng switch on the outer div and not here. Okay, because inside this div, we want to display some content. We either want to display this div or we want to display this div or we want to display this div or we want to display this div. So total we have four divs and out of these four divs, we want to display a single div at a time. And we want to display that div inside this outer div. So I'm going to use that ng switch on that outer div. And on these inner divs, we need to use ng switch case directive. Okay. And this ng switch case directive, it is a structural directive because it is this ng switch case directive which is going to manipulate the DOM. So based on the value which we are going to assign to this ng switch case directive, it is going to manipulate the DOM. Now here, what are we assigning to this ng switch? We are assigning tab property and tab property is of type string. So let's say if the value of this tab property is info, so that info should be string. So here I am using single quotes within the double quote and I'll say info. So if the value stored in this tab property is info, in that case, we want to display this div. In the same way, let me also use this ng switch case on other divs. So I'll use that ng switch case here also. And in this case, I will say if the value stored in the tab property is service, okay, basically we need to compare this value which we are assigning to this ng switch case with this expression. And this tab, it is going to store a string value. If that string value is service, then we want to display this div. Okay. In the same way, on this div also, let me go ahead and let me add an ng switch case. And in here, I'll say 
if the tab value contains a string value let's say privacy then i want to display this div and in here i'm going to again use ng switch directive and in here let's say if the value is user in that case we want to display this div okay so if the value stored in this tab property is info this div will be rendered in the web page otherwise if the value stored in this tab property is service this div will be rendered in the web page if the value stored in the tab property is privacy this div will be rendered in the web page or else if the value stored in the tab property is user this div will be rendered in the web page now currently what is the value of this tab it is empty string so if you go to the web page and when the page reloads you will notice that nothing has been rendered inside that div none of these four divs has been rendered there because the tab value currently it is empty string and it does not matches with any of these values so none of these divs have been rendered in the web page now what we are going to do is on each of these button elements we are going to bind click event okay and in order to bind an event we need to wrap it within parenthesis to this let's assign a method let's say on info clicked and let me go ahead and let me create this method in the app component class and in here i will simply set this dot tab to info okay in the same way on this button also let's bind click event and here i will assign the method on service clicked let's go ahead and let's create this method as well in the app component class and in here i will say this dot tab equals service same thing we will do for privacy let's go ahead and let's create this method and here let's say this dot tab equals privacy finally on this button also let's bind click event and here let's say method is on user agreement clicked let me go ahead and let me create this method in the app component class and here i will set this tab value to user okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page so initially since the tab is empty string nothing will be rendered but when i click on this info in that case tab property will be set to info so in that case here this div is checking for this value info so when we click on this info button the tab property it will be set to info so when it is info this div will be rendered and when it is service when the value of tab property is service this second div will be rendered so if i go to the web page and when i click on this service in that case that div has been rendered in the same way when we click on this button tab property will be set to privacy in that case this div will be rendered this content and when we click on this user agreement tab property will be set to user in that case this content will be rendered so now it is working as expected but initially when the page loads the tab property is set to empty string in that case nothing is being rendered here but what i want is if the value is not among info so if the value of this tab property is neither info nor service nor privacy and nor user in that case i want to render a default content and let's say i want this content this first content to be the default content for that instead of using this ng switch case what i will do is here i will use ng switch default so we want this div to be default if none of the ng switch case value matches the value stored in this tab property in that case by default we want to render this div and this ng switch default we also need to use an asterisk before it because it is also going to manipulate the dom okay so let's save the changes and now you will notice that even though the tab property will be initially set to empty string and it is not going to match any of these values by default this first div will be rendered so if i go to the web page you will notice that the first div has been rendered 
But let's see what happens when we go to another tab here. So when I click on this service button, so there it is correctly rendering the content. So it is rendering the terms of services. When I go to privacy, it is rendering privacy policy. When we go to user agreement, it is rendering user agreement. When we go to info, it is rendering info. And initially also when we page loads, by default, the first div is the default one. So here you see the H1 element is terms of services and privacy policy. So initially when the value of this tab property is empty string, that time this default div is rendered in the web page. Okay, so this ng switch directive, it is similar to switch statement in any programming language. So for example, in a programming language like JavaScript, we have a switch statement. To that switch statement, we assign some expression. And then for that switch statement, we have different cases. And we also have a default case. If none of the case matches, in that case, default case gets executed. But if any of the case matches, in that case, that particular case gets executed. So this ng switch directive is similar to switch statement in any programming language like JavaScript. So I hope with this example, the use of ng switch directive is clear to you. So this ng switch directive is different from ng if directive in a way that using ng switch directive, we can render one of the views from multiple views based on the value of the expression which we are assigning to ng switch. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.